What's up guys? Welcome to the live stream. We're going to answer a couple questions on Facebook. First question up is going to be from Wanara Hernandez. His question is to me. This is via Facebook. So if you guys have questions, obviously email, hit us up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever you got, whatever you guys like. His question is, hello, hope you're doing well. Just wanted to ask your opinion on the Akio HTS 3900 5.1 channel home theater receiver speaker package. I have a really tight budget of $300, but still want the full experience. Well, Wanara, my answer to you is, if you have nothing and you only have $300 and you can only afford a home theater in a box from Akio, I think uh, if you have nothing and you're just getting into something, then that's a good thing. I would just just buy it. You know, it's 300 bucks. It's better than just watching movies on your on your television set. So I think that's a good thing. Just do it. That's your first steps. It's your um, your entry entryway into the world of home theater. Once you get going there, obviously you're probably going to end up upgrading your speakers at some point in time. The receiver will probably last. So you probably end up getting the home theater in a box. Slowly, you, I'm sure you'll up. up update your speakers because those things come with little cheapy speakers then after you get some uh, your your spare chains built up move on to your receiver and then of course you know TVs and source components and you'll see what happens when you get into the home theater game it's like an addiction it's never ending always new speakers always new source gear always something new but thanks for the question there Wanara next question here it's from Benji Alvarez. Hey Shane, I was wondering what you use to black out your bay window behind your projector screen. I'm a beginner. I'm a, I'm a beginner level with projectors and screens. I have a 120 inch pull down screen in front of a big bay window myself, so I usually wait till until dark to watch movies. So I'm curious how you like how you black it out. Well, Benji, thanks for the question. Uh, if you guys have been watching any of my videos. Uh, you know that my projector screen in the home theater is right in front of a bay window. A bay windows tend to curve outwards. So you get the nice light. Gives you a little bit more depth inside your room. But for my situation, I've got it covered up with some blackout curtains. But I use three packages. They're like 50 bucks a pack. Three packages cover the entire wall. Check it out. Go to Home Depot. Pretty cheap. I think everybody's got a Home Depot in your area. Unless you're not in America, then I don't know what you guys got. But either pick up those blackout curtains at the depot, or you can go to like a Joanne Fabrics, and you can buy, purchase by the yard, some blackout fabric. And that's, uh, or sorry, a blackout curtains. I keep on saying blackout fabric. That's a blackout, blackout curtains. So it's kind of like black velvet on one side, and it's almost like a, almost like a plasticky material on the back. So you get like zero light that comes through. But that's uh, that, that's what you can purchase at like a Joanne's fabric. Home Depot, it's more just like really thick cloth, almost like velvety material. And the good thing about the material that I picked up at Home Depot is that since it's kind of like velvet, if you're overshooting your screen, anything that you get for, for your overshoot, it'll actually absorb the light. So you won't see, you won't see any kind of a your overshoot images or your overscan images. So that's the good thing. But yeah, check it out. Home Depot. It's like 45, 50 bucks a package. Good deal. Thanks for the question there, Benji. And uh, thanks for asking that question. Like you actually paid attention to what kind of windows I have. This one, is this the last one? One more question here. This one is a, a YouTube commenter. His name is uh, Ma Garcia 20 I'm looking to go from soundbar to 5.1 or 5.2 system using the clip speakers in the links you provided with about $1,500 budget. Would I be doing? Would I be doing? Number one, the five, the R52C for center. Two R41s for mains and surrounds, and one or two subs. Any suggestions on a high-end receiver? Well, you've got $1,500. Uh, Mr. Garcia, I would say to fit within that budget under $1,500, I would check out one of the Akio receivers. You could do something like a, um, 
think like 686, I think it is. Akio, I th yeah, I think it's like a 686, or... What do we got here? Actually, no, 393, which is like $250. That's a good entry. Entry level at most receiver from Ankyo. Uh, and then the 686 is 400 bucks. I think with uh, with your $1,500 budget, that's going to be probably cutting it kind of close. So I would check out those guys. Um, you can check them out at Best Buy. You can see them in person, Best Buy. Then you can probably buy it for cheaper on Amazon. This is an email question from uh, Normandy. Normandy NPL, next question up. Hi, love the reviews. I ran Odyssey on my Marantz 8805. That's a nice preamp, pre-pro. The base seems to have disappeared. Do you have a review or suggestion on how to fix this? Well, I actually did a review on the 8805. Actually, I did the review over on Audioholics uh, about a couple months ago. But uh, I've noticed that too. Usually when I run Odyssey, I have a zero base. So I always have to go in and bump up my subs about another 6 dB or so. So I mean, don't be afraid to bump up your subwoofer levels because that's just kind of what happens with Odyssey. At least from my experience, I don't know what, what everybody else's experience is with Odyssey. And then if you really want to dig into it, then you can go break out your um, calibration mic. The UMIC one, or you can pick up one of those Dayton mics. Download Room EQ. It's a free download. Once you pick up one of the calibration mics, take some measurements of your room. After you run to Odyssey, see what kind of bass response you're getting, any dips and peaks. And then you can kind of compensate compensate for that. It does help if you have the 8805 and you have to pay for the, uh, you've got to pay for the Odyssey app, which is $20. So you can really go in and, and tailor the sound. You can change your audio curves. So if you want to get a nice little bump in 30 hertz range, or you want to bump into 40, 35, 40 hertz range, if you're missing kind of bass there, then you can do that. It's always good to double check. But otherwise, I would just uh, bump up your subwoofer levels. And if you want to get more advanced, check out Roomy Q Wizard. Thanks for the question, Normandy. And one more, actually, no, two more questions. This is from Kiss Chris Kohoot. Hello, Spare Change. My name is Chris. I am from Ohio. I just want to thank you for all the time and effort you put into making your videos. Thanks, Chris. I've watched so many of your vids and you really helped me make up my mind on which 4K player to go with. I ended up getting the UB820 from Value Electronics. Shout out to Value Electronics. Thank you. UB820. Solid, solid player. I use a link to your review to the 820. I was not sure if it gave you kickback. Blah, blah, blah. Mm. Oh. Basically, he was just saying thank you. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for uh, picking that up from Value Electronics. I don't get a kickback if you guys purchase anything from Value Electronics. I don't get any money for that. I'm just basically just doing a nice thing for uh, for Robert over there, Value Electronics, by giving him some coverage and uh, he loans us some products. That's about it. And last question of the day. This is from Michael via email. If you have covered this already, I apologize. I don't see it anywhere. How do you feel about timbre matching? or keeping in the same brand slash model with all speakers. It is also inevitable that I have already pre-ordered Avengers Endgame 4K Steelbook. That has to be record, day one in theaters. Thanks, and keep up the good work. Well, Michael, how do I feel about timbre matching? I was actually gonna do a video on this, like a separate video, but I feel that timbre matching is important for everybody out there that doesn't know what timbre matching is. It's actually spell, spelled T-I-M-B-R-E. So you would think it would sound like timber, but it's pronounced timber. So timber matching is basically keeping the same exact sound from speaker to speaker all the way across the board from every single one of your every single one of your speakers from left, front, right, surround channels, back channels, overhead channels. Usually you would accomplish that if you have some golden ears and you can tell different speakers that sound the same. Or if you want to be on the safe side, you can pick up the same speakers from the same manufacturer and from the same lineup. So for my situation, I use the Arendel speakers, which they share the same tweeter, they share the same mid-bass drivers, and every single one of their speakers. So if you were to, so since they all share the same drivers, 
they're gonna sound as they're gonna be voiced exactly the same so if somebody was going to talk from one speaker to the next speaker to the back speaker to the top speaker that voice would sound exactly the same through every one of your speakers so that's what camera matching is and for me personally i think it's important especially if you're doing surround sound that you want to tamper match all your speakers because you don't want to you don't want to have like say like a clip speaker up front which typically they utilize a horn horns can be a little bit different than maybe like your traditional like a soft dome tweeter so i mean uh, it might be a little bit harder edge sounding maybe brighter sounding up front then maybe if you went to a, a soft dome tweeter in the back it might sound a little different maybe a little softer or maybe more just different in general so you, you don't want to, you know, throw your attention from your movie watching, from something that happens in the front of the room to the back of the room, and vice versa. So that's why tamper matching, for me, is important. Sometimes it's hard to tamper match because maybe you shelled out a lot of money for your front speakers, and, you know, the surround speakers are usually about half the price or maybe close to the front speakers. So it can be a little costly to kind of match within all well, within the same family or same brand of speakers. Um, if you're building a home theater, then I think it's a good idea to keep it within the same family. You know what I'm saying? Keep it in the same family if it's speakers. If it's something else, then don't do that. But yeah, for me, timbre matching, important. Match your speakers. Ensure that you're going to get proper voicing within all channels so you get a nice cohesive sound field. That's how I feel about that. But that's the last question that I had. That's today's mail time questions. Thank you if you guys have any future questions that I don't address in the live stream or I just don't get to you in the comment sections on the videos or if you sent an email and I missed it and said another one. But again, hit us up on the comment section, email, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, I'll try to address it in a future live stream. So thanks, guys. All right, so next up, who saw John Wick 3? I saw John Wick 3 last night. And I thought it was pretty damn good. Was it the best? Was it the best John Wick that I'd seen? I still think the best John Wick is still number one. Only because... I guess he didn't kill 2,000 people in the movie. I felt like John Wick number one was really a really, really good compromise. You know, he gets his dog killed and he's uh, still kind of a sad dude over his wife. Kills all the bad dudes. What he killed me? Like a hundred guys? And then John Wick 2 came around. The guy killed like maybe like a thousand people. Like I, I get it, like some people like a lot of action, they like a lot of gunplay, knife play, all this other stuff. But I felt John Wick 2 kind of went overboard with all the killing. Like, I mean, did you have to have like ten minute stretches of him just killing everybody? Like I, I felt a little overkill. In John Wick 2. And they kind of did the same thing. Oh, they kind of did the same thing in part 3. I don't want to give any plot details away, but... I feel like he just kills fucking, like, everybody. That's the only thing that drives me, that has been driving me crazy about the sequels in John Wick. Like, do you have to kill everybody? I mean, come on. Otherwise, I mean, it was, it was a fun movie, though. For anybody that hasn't seen John Wick. But yeah, let's, uh, let's answer, answer a couple of questions here. If you've seen John Wick, let me know in the comments what you thought about it. Oh, one more thing for as a movie topic. Let me know who you guys prefer. Robert Pattinson or Nicholas Holt, a.k.a. The Beast, from X-Men as Batman. For me personally, I'm thinking, I'm thinking Edward would make a better Batman. That's what I think. Alexander Bethel, I heard Iron Man Trilogy will be released in 4K after Endgame is released. Do you think Iron Man will hold up? Well, Alexander, I heard that Iron Man was supposed to come out in August. That's the word that I heard, like an official, like an official, like Disney, Disney release. I think the German version is just, I think somebody just took a, uh, a DVD and just upscaled it to 4K because that's what it looks like. I remember that coming out sometime, what was it last year or two years ago? It was probably the shittiest looking DVD I had seen. I mean, everything was just blown out. It was, straight up look like a DVD that they just upscaled and put on a 4K Blu-ray. I know a lot of people paid for that, but it was pure garbage. Don't buy it. I think the official re official Disney release of Iron Man is supposed to come out in, in uh, August, though. That's what I heard. 
So it should look pretty, it should look pretty darn good. Uh, next question, Luis Chavez, Shane, what are your thoughts on Sound United buying Integra, Accio, and Pioneer? Yeah, man, I heard about that the other day. Everybody was like texting me that the other day. Um, I mean, you got Morantz, Denon, Pioneer, Accio. Psh, they got like the Monopoly. If you go to your Best Buy or PC Richards, I mean, it's all Sound United. I'm not sure if they're going to kind of like change the UI on all the receivers or not, but or if they're going to implement Odyssey across all the brands. You know who might know something more about this than I would would be um, Gene over at Audioholics. If you guys are not subscribed to Audioholics, I'm going to be on the live stream, I think, tonight on Audioholics. We're going to go over all the, the preamp processors that I had reviewed for their channel. And uh, we're going to discuss that probably tonight and whatever else Gene has to talk about. Uh, I'm sure we're going to talk about uh, this whole acquisition of Ankyo Pioneer from Sun United. But yeah, I think they would the only one that they don't own is like um is like uh Yamaha. I think Yamaha is like one of the only ones they don't own other than like the niche niche brands like NAD. But I mean let's say let's say Sound United picks them up. I wouldn't mind seeing Odyssey on an Ankyo and Odyssey on a Pioneer cuz I've never been a fan of their room correction. I totally, I hate, I hate Ankyo in there, in their, what is it, MCAAC or something like that? I had it on the Integra for years and I thought it sounded like crap, so I never used it. And then you got Pioneer's, um, I don't even know what they're just called, Air something or another. I never liked that either. I mean, Odyssey's really, uh, Odyssey's gotten a lot better, especially if you know how to use the app and you have RoomEQ Wizard and you know how to change curves and all that stuff. So I think uh, I think Odyssey would be the best bet if they were to purchase them and at least put Odyssey in all the stuff because I hate the other room correction services. But as far as um, you know, if they keep everything else the same, just as long as they keep their sound signature, like Ankyo has their own sound, Pioneer has their own sound, Denon Marantz has their own sound, just keep that all the same. I don't want to see matching UIs. You know, like Denon Marantz, they have like the exact same UI. So it's almost like you're buying the exact same receiver. At least, you know, keep it different. Other than that, you know, I don't... It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me what they do. Next question is uh, from uh, Sukwinder Singh. I have a JVC 590R. I was thinking of upgrade to a 295ES or 385ES. Which one do you think I should get? Well... I believe the 385 is a couple of years old now, if I'm not mistaken. What, one or two years old? Uh, if I was you, I would pick up the Sony 295. That's what I would get. Otherwise, Sony 295 or the uh, GVC NX5? I would look at those two. Those are the two that I would look at. I mean, I've got, I've got the 695, which is essentially kind of the same as the 295. You're gonna get almost the same image quality. You, you're gonna get better contrast on the 695 because of the dynamic iris. And uh, the 295 is a little bit less bright. So, I mean, it really depends on your screen size, what kind of screen you're gonna use and your, your room that it's in. But I would do the 295 because it does have uh, IMAX enhanced capabilities. The 385, I don't know what the support is gonna be like that anymore. So, I mean, just to keep yourself kind of current, I'd probably do the 295. Ronald Fisher. Plus, I think 295 has uh, the newer version of HDMI on it, if I'm not mistaken. Ronald Fisher. What do you think is a good match for the Revel F36 floor standing speakers in the separate AV processor realm? Well, well Ronald, the Revels are pretty nice speakers. If you're going to do separates, AV processor. I mean, lately my favorite has been the uh, the NAD. That's been my favorite recently. Mm, right now I'm doing the Rotel. I wouldn't say the Rotel is like the highest end though, but it does sound really good. Um, check out the Lexicon MC10. Hopefully, hopefully I get that in soon. I've been in talks with them to check that out. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. 
Emotiva has got their RMC, RMC1. I think that's kind of riddled with bugs right now, but they're working on fixing all the bugs. That'll do something like, I don't even know, like 24 channels or something like that, 28 channels, 26. Uh, after all the bugs get worked out on that, that's, that's supposed to sound really good. Mm. Then of course, if you're a, if you're a fan of the Marant sound, then uh, the Marantz 8805 is really solid as well. But I mean, if you got that cash, extra cash, extra spare change, NAD kind of just the best sounding one that I've heard so far. NAD M M17 V2 plus it's modular. Little things going on with the HDMI board, you know, compatibility. But if you've got a simple setup, you can do the NAD. That's a kicking uh, that's a kicking processor right there. But then again, you know, I don't know how much money you got, so obviously if you can do like a like a data sat or a Chernov, if you got that kind of money, those are gonna be your best. Francesco Fadi, do projectors have uniformity issues like TVs or or are they perfectly uniform? What about dead pixels? I'm going to buy a Sony 4K projector, but I'm scared since I saved my money for a year to buy it. So the only thing about projectors you get pretty good you get really good uniformity on them but if you buy if you were to buy like a cheaper projector or the thing with projectors is sometimes you'll get depending on the kind of lens that's in it sometimes they're they can be a little bit soft around the edges but then man, i mean you'd have to really be like pixel peeping to see that though you know what i mean um, that's the only thing like if you're buying like a something with like plastic lens like a cheaper projector I mean if you're buying a Sony projector they have pretty decent lenses in them so I wouldn't worry about that too much um yeah man just like uh just a little bit of softness in the lens maybe chromatic aberration around the edges that's where if you were to have like a solid like a line you might see a little blue or green shift around the edges like that's what like chromatic aberration is but that's really a, you'd really have to be kind of looking for that that's like one of the main things with projectors and their lenses, especially if you're buying cheaper ones. But as far as like uniformity, light uniformity, that's the, that has a lot to do with the type of screen that you have and the kind of room that you're gonna put it in. Otherwise, not really, man. Uh, everything's pretty uniform across the board. So I mean, it's a, it's a safe bet. That's what I would do. That's what I would look for. If you do, if you do, if you do buy a Sony projector, then uh, obviously let us know. Or let me know. Just hit us up in the comments or something like that. Fernando Alman, I plan to start with an Emotiva XPAA3 to power my LCR. Would you recommend the Marantz 6013 or the 7012 to start things in this setup? I would, uh, Marantz or the, well, obviously I would get the best, man. Fernando, get the 7012. I mean, if you're really going to, I would say, I would say if you if you have something now, just keep with what you got and save your money and get yourself like a proper preamp processor and forego spending the extra cost on a receiver. Because why, why why buy a receiver right off the bat and spend the money for the internal amps if you're going to buy an external amp, you know what I'm saying? So why waste the money for that? Get yourself a, a nice processor. Processors, yeah, a little, little bit more money, but it's going to sound better in the long run, trust me. There's a difference between a receiver and a preamp processor and a separate amp. But just to answer your question, uh, I would do the 7012. But again, save your spare change. Get yourself a, a dedicated processor. Uh, hey, man, that home theater dude, I wish I knew how to live stream. This is the home theater dude. I tried to hit him up earlier. Maybe we could do a live stream together. Uh, home theater dude, Chris, if you guys know him, he's got that, that great channel. I think he's about to blow by me pretty soon. He's doing some uh, kick-ass stuff over there. I don't theater dude Shane and I have something special. <laughs> yeah, man, we have uh, me and uh, home theater dude Chris. We're going to do something. We're going to do something together. A little joint project we're going to be working on. So stay tuned for that. Obviously, subscribe to me, subscribe to him, and stay tuned. Hopefully, it'll be a uh, it'll be fun. Dirk504, any chance you will be reviewing the new JVC 4K projectors? Interested in how they compare to the Sony's? Also, your thoughts on uh, HSU subwoofers? I've actually been trying to get their subwoofers in, but they don't like to answer my they don't like to answer my emails. So uh, I don't really have any thoughts on their subwoofers. Uh, but yeah, man, I I'm 
on NQ to get a JVC NX7. I believe one other reviewer has it right now, or one other magazine has it. I think it's a magazine. And then after that, then I'm supposed to get it. This has been, man, like three weeks now. Two, three weeks I've been waiting. So hopefully, uh, you know, they don't burn all the, the lamp life out of that thing. But mm, maybe another two weeks, maybe three weeks. That's, that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. So, I mean, I'm looking forward to getting it. Um, you know, I've had Sony projectors for, I mean, ever since I started YouTube, uh, two, three years now, I have Sony projectors two, three years now. And, uh, before that I had the JVC, I had a JVC projector. I forgot, I forgot what model number it was. It was like the five something. Um, the biggest difference that I've seen between, between going from an E-Shift 4K projector and a Sony projector, um, obviously resolution. A little bit better on the Sony projector for sure, uh, but black levels like contrast, contrast was better on the JVC. So I mean, if we, if we can get the uh, Sony resolution sharpness and then the JVC black levels together, then uh, I might have to sell my Sony projector. So we'll see how the NX7 stacks up. Hopefully sooner sooner rather than later. Um, LG Hope, are you going to review the Arcam Reese AVR? Uh, probably not gonna do Arcam AVR. I try not to do AVRs. I'm not really, I'm not really a receiver kind of person. Um, it's kind of like, it's like one of those things. Once you go separate, you kind of don't want to go back to to AVR. But I don't think so. If anything, uh, I'm trying to get the Arcam um, 860 in, which is their pre-pro. So hopefully I can score that. I've got a, um, I actually have a uh, a budget home theater, home theater speaker system that I will be working on. Probably another week or so. Um, it's going to be like under a thousand dollars. So, I kind of want to cover something that's going to be affordable for a lot of people. That isn't like you know like a clip or an SVS. So we're going to do something with uh, with someone that is affordable and that sounds really good. Uh, Timothy asks, "How come you never did a review on the Ramble 4K movies?" Well, I didn't do a review on the 4K Rambo movies because uh, I didn't think they were good enough for me to uh, actually sit through and watch again. So that's why I didn't do Rambo One. Was just kind of a soft movie. So if you're, I mean, if you're a Rambo fan, yeah, pick it up. But if you're a really home theater 4K enthusiast, it's not really gonna, it's not gonna blow you away because I wasn't blown away by it. So I skipped it. That's why. That's why I didn't do it. Mark, hi Shane, I have a Sony HTZ9 Atmos soundbar with wireless rears. I thought about going to Samsung 950 setup, but I noticed much of a difference. Mm, have you heard the Damson? No, I haven't heard the Damson. I'm probably not going to spend spend the time to get the Damson. Um, but yeah, you're going to hear a difference with the Samsung. The Samsung is a better bar. The 950 is better than the, than the Sony Z9 for sure. Movizi, seeing you've been trying out Emotiva amps, what do you think of their Airmotive speaker line? Yeah, I've been doing a lot of the Emotivo stuff. They they're really kind of ramping up their their uh, their PR push with a lot of the YouTubers. Um, I haven't heard any of their original Airmotive lines because personally, I thought they were kind of ugly looking, so I never wanted to check them out. But uh, I hear some people like them; they're affordable. But if you guys have noticed an ongoing trend on their website, a lot of the stuff is on closeout. So they're getting rid of a lot of stuff because they're, there's actually a new Airmotive line that's coming out. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say that or not, but uh, there's some stuff coming out. So hopefully I'm um, going to be working on getting getting a, like a, maybe like an Atmos system from them to check out. Check out what they offer. I think the visually the cabinets are, are changing as well. So they're not going to have the, the weird kind of diamond cutout look to them. Um, that's one of the one of the, one of the reasons why I never got one in because I mean when you buy speakers you like your you're always looking at your speakers so you kind of want to be attracted to your you want to have attractive looking gear in your house you know what I'm saying like I was never attracted to those speakers so I was never interested in getting them in James Turner what's the future for your channel the future for my channel is you know I thought about doing maybe like a like vlog style videos maybe like once a week about uh, you know what it's like to get 
what it's like to get products in for review. Maybe, maybe that would be something interesting. Mm, but I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure how I would, I would, how I would tackle that. Uh, Dirk, will I be doing another top ten mid-year 4K Blu-ray release? My money is on Aquaman as number one. You know, I haven't, I haven't even thought about that. Anyway, what month are we in right now? Mm, that'd be like next month, I guess, right? I would actually, probably. Now that you bring it up, maybe, maybe I'll do it. I hadn't even crossed my mind. But yeah, maybe I'll do it now. But all right, guys, let's wrap up this live stream. I don't know. It was probably kind of uh, laggy. I think I got some uh, crappy internet. I'm at the opposite end of the house today. Um, definitely send us your questions through email, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Leave us a comment. And uh, I'll try to pick it out. If it catches my eye, I'll pick it out. Or just stick out for the next live stream here. You know, if you got a topic or something you want to talk about, then uh, send us that email. All right. Thanks for hanging out. I know this is kind of just a random thing today. It's always kind of a random thing. But thanks for watching. See you in the next one.